any other headline issues that well, concern you? Well, yeah. He's, um, ever since I've known him, since he was 12 years old, actually, he's smoked weed. He smoked That's weed, true. yeah. He was he was high the day he proposed. He was old. high the day he married. He's probably high right now, actually. <laughs> I'm sure of it. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Brandon and Kirsten were high school sweethearts who got married and started a family together. But now, Brandon says Kirsten has a gambling problem, while she asserts Brandon is a violent pothead. I've on many occasions had to pee in a cup for him so that he could get a job. You've never peed in a cup. Oh, bull. All right, bull. Well, how often would she gamble? Every two to three days. I mean, we lost over $30,000 oh, in bull. savings, in right. credit card debt. Brandon is ready to give up on their marriage, while Kirsten wants to give it one more try. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Brandon Rich and Kirsten Rich. The two of you have been married for seven years. Uh, you don't know whether you want to stay married or you want to see if you can save the marriage. We want to talk about that here today, see if we can save it. Or if not, Mr. Rich, you're seeking $990 from Mrs. Rich for credit card purchases. You say she put on a credit card, and we will, if we get there, talk about that momentarily. Before we do that, however, I'm going to start with uh, Mrs. Rich. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here today? Well. We've been together since we were 15, but there are a lot of issues in our marriage, starting with his anger issues. Uh, we fought a lot. One time I was taking a shower and he was upset and he threw, threw my purse at the shower door and all the contents spread out and including, it broke a, um, a nail polish bottle and it went all over the linoleum, which was very hard to clean. I was getting ready for work. I had to wear a uniform to work and right before I was about to leave, he poured a, um, a liter of coke over my head so that I had to shower and clean it up. One time we were in the midst of fighting and he actually threw a shoe at me and hit me. It was just, it, it was nonstop and we barely saw each other as it were. Um, he, the only place I could hide oftentimes was when we'd get into arguments like this was um, in the bathroom because I could lock myself in and mm -hmm. he once got so angry that I was in there that he punched a hole in the bathroom, in the bathroom door. Uh, anger, any other headline issues that well, concern you? Well, yeah. He's, um, ever since I've known him, since he was 12 years old, actually, he's smoked weed. He That's smoked weed. True. Yeah, he was, he was high the day he proposed. He was old. high the day he married. He's probably high right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure of it. He was high on the way here. Uh, he, I, I, I've on many occasions had to pee in a cup for him so that he could get a job. You've never oh. peed in a cup. Oh, boy. All right. well, 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 OK. <laughs> Mr. Rich, what would you like to say about the allegations that your wife has made? First of all, I haven't been smoking you. weed since I was 12 years old. I think that would have uh, been fifth grade. I think I've known you long enough to know that. Nonetheless, this, hey, this, on, this issue has nothing to do with my anger issues. Yes, well, those, those are absolute issues. I agree. That's let's why, that's why I, I finally left. I you agree. I have been in writing, Ms. Ms. Rich, let the man finish. I, I definitely have some anger issues, and everything she said absolutely happened as a result of her lies, her no, gambling, no. the things she was doing that were destroying our marriage on a daily basis. So you say, you admit to having a, an anger issue where you do inappropriate things when you do get angry, but you say that she does things that in, uh, are wrong that and inspire that, that yeah, anger. Yeah, absolutely. And that is one of the reasons why I finally decided to leave, because I felt my anger getting to a point where it could become physical and... You didn't want that I to didn't happen. want that to happen. but. By no means do I feel like I have an anger issue. That she's the person that brings that out of me. She, the lies and the and the things. Well, you she was were, doing. you you didn't have an anger issue before you married her. I mean, her? Uh, yes. I, I guess I have an anger issue in that if I get upset, yeah, I can fly off the handle. I can get so loud. So you're a bit of a hothead. Yeah. I mean, some yeah. people yeah. are. I mean, you're yeah. a bit of a hothead. Absolutely. Except that the the things that he is bringing up that would anger him are not an issue anymore. The specific the specific things that he's bringing up that would entice his anger. Um, first of all, we were on separate schedules. We never saw each other. So the few times we did see each other, because I worked nights, because I was trying to save our family. I was, I was at home. 
Oh, no. please. <laughs> I was at home with an infant and a toddler and nursing at work. I had to get a night job so that we can, we can both be able to live. And so I was sacrificing sleep. I was sacrificing. Except she would get off work and then for three hours sit at the casino and gamble. Okay. And that's the true issue is she, she, used to, he, she gambles? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's an issue anymore because we've been casino. separated Stop. and we don't live together for almost a year now. So I don't know what her issues are anymore. She, well, how but, often but the, would she gamble? On a regular basis, every two to three days. Every and two to three days, did she lose significant amounts yeah, of money? Yeah, I mean, we lost over $30,000 oh, in cool. savings, That's in not right. credit card debt. No we way. took out a person. No way we we had took that. out a personal loan from the same aunt's house that we uh -huh. lived in for $18,000 to pay off. Four credit cards she had oh, maxed out oh, in three months. Oh, speaking of that credit card, can well, I tell you, Judge? Later. Right now, I want to talk about how often did you gamble? How often do you say you gambled? I I worked at a casino first of all, so okay. it was after work. I, you know, I never got it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps it could be phrased that way. Um, I would say, yeah, maybe maybe two days a week with sixty dollars. I mean, okay. that's what Never I have. So how much oh, money cool. do you think you really lost at the casino? Well, I, I, years to period. be honest, I would say it was probably um, ten thousand, and we've gone over this. Ten thousand. Ten thousand yes. dollars. Okay. When divorce court continues, has Kirsten been abusing prescription medication? She was supposed to take one pill every three or four hours. She would take five or six pills within the eight-hour shift that she went to work. Is your spouse ready to walk out the door, but you want to try and save your marriage? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Kirsten Rich, who claims her husband's anger issues are ruining their family. But is Kirsten deliberately dragging their kids into her volatile relationship? She thinks the kids need to be involved. She <laughs> she followed that up by driving to my house and sitting out in front of my I door, my reading the summons and complaint out loud to my children. Mr. Rich, you say that she is addicted to Adderall. Why don't you explain that to me? Yes, explain that. She, for the two years during this whole period of time, was taking prescription Adderall that was prescribed to her. However, she was supposed to take one pill every three or four hours. She would take five or six pills within the eight hour shift that she went to work. She was spun out. She, was, she lost like 60, 40, 60 pounds. She was skin and bones at that point. It wasn't even her. I and mean, you would try to hold a conversation a with, with her. prescription medication? I, let me tell you. She takes I, responsibility for nothing. Everything is let me no, tell you, no, let no, me no. explain. Well, there well is no I responsibility can't explain. For anything I can't explain because I, I myself, like I said, I was having to go 24 hours for this family. No, she wasn't. She wasn't doing oh, okay. anything at the I house. was working yeah. nights and I had two children at home, okay? So yes, I was going 24 hours. And I, I have, I'm hypothyroid, I was battling depression, and I was working with my doctors for, for different prescriptions, yes. And I was going to sleep therapy because I, I was, they called it um, excessive daytime sleepiness, is what they mm -hmm. called it. But yes, it affected me. My lack of sleep, my depression, my hypothyroid. So I was working with doctors with different things. I was going to sleep therapy. Mm -hmm. There was all different things. Anything I did, he disapproved of. M Ms. Mr. Rich, now, and just, just take a minute here, and I know whether or not her pill use caused problems, do you acknowledge that she did, in fact, have medical issues that, though they may not have worked out as, you, as the medicine would have liked, that she did have legitimate medical issues that she was trying I, to address. She does have hypothyroid, but that that's even and more depression. to the point. She wouldn't even take that thyroid medication. She wouldn't even go get the medication oh. half the time. But she always had the How Adderall. How would you even you know tell, that? You say that she sleeps all day while the kids wander about the house. I mean, that was that was during this period of time. There was uh -huh. she claims that she was holding up a job and holding up a household. She wasn't doing anything around the house. She didn't <laughs> clean. She didn't cook. I managed every bill. I paid. I, I mean, I cleaned the Lack house. I cooked. I, was a zombie. I took care of the kids. She would send my kids to school and clothes that were too small for them. My son would come home I and had, had no money to buy new clothes. We had clothes. She just didn't want to oh, go look in the drawers and oh, find them, so she on. just would pick out. We always had, the kids have always had clothes. The kills, kids are well taken care of. She says, well, th he keeps focusing on all these things I did in the past. Right now, today, I went and picked my kids up four days ago. She's sitting in her house watching our wedding video with my five and three year old oh. and thinks that's normal well, because the kids deserve papers. to know what their parents were like when they were happy. 
Divorce my three and my five year old. I was served divorce papers while I was watching the wedding video. No, you were served divorce papers after that. Okay. I came and but picked I, my kids up. Let me ask you, what were you watching the wedding video? Because I was pulling anyway. out the wedding video because they That's were not asking the first for. Time. Hang on. That's a second time. And my daughter saw it and wants. Why can't she see her parents happy? Were you what? really doing a joyful thing and remembering a joyful moment, or were you dragging them into the mess that you guys are in? And be honest about it. When you were showing that video, what was your true motivation? Honestly, I had pulled out the videos to bring with me here. Right. My daughter saw it and wanted to see it. And I, when I put it on, I was emotional. I was very emotional. And I know and, and my daughter was with me. And I know, you know, in hindsight, you know, you know I don't You can it. always tell kids no. It's, it, it, no. No, she thinks she thinks the kids need to be involved. No. She she followed that up by driving to my house and sitting out in front of my I door, my reading the summons and complaint out loud to my children. I want to show my and kids. And then telling them, the complaint out loud." She to told children. my daughter what that complaint? daddy just gave me an "I don't love me" letter. What I don't are you love you letter. About? That's what you told her. What are you talking about? Yeah. I think I believe him, Ms. Rich. It's too specific. I don't even. I didn't even hear what he said. He said that you told your children when you got the divorce papers that Daddy just gave me an "I don't love you" letter. The kids weren't even with me. He yeah, had no. They, them you up. drove to my house. You came to my house oh, and would not leave house. my house. Okay. Sat I came on my to doorstep. the house afterwards. Yeah, but I never said that to her daughter. Yeah, you did. No, I she, didn't. So she made that up. I'm sure. Okay. When Divorce Court continues, what happens when Brandon gives Kirsten a second chance? I put a, together a game plan for us to be back together. Two weeks later, she stole my player's card that I had from the casino with $500 free play on it. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter, at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Brandon Rich, who is fed up with his wife's unstable behavior, but has Brandon been a model husband and father? He's um, at the door, I gotta go, my wife thinks she's in labor. No, he still didn't believe me. I drove myself to the hospital that night. Tell me about the second chance you gave her last December. Just, yeah, just in December after being in my own place for six months, being at the point where I've moved on, although I hadn't actually finalized a divorce, I, I was moving on, and she convinced me that in everybody's best interest, I walked out too soon, that I, my kids deserve to have their parents together, and she's changed, and all that stuff that I didn't like about her before is all gone, and I agreed that we could make it work. We After a night of Would coke you binging. Would please Whatever. let the man finish, and I will get to you. Go ahead. So I, I agreed that we would try to make it work. I even said she could move into my apartment because her lease was going to be up, and it would make more sense for us <laughs> to save money and pay off our bills. Right. I put a, together a game plan for us to be back together. Two weeks later, she stole my player's card that I had from the casino with $500 free play on it at her own casino, went and used it, which is against casino rules, and then lied to me. Lied to me for two weeks and actually told me to go to her work and open an investigation because it definitely wasn't her. She ended up losing her job over it because they actually, caught her on video. Actually, that's not why I lost my okay. job. They caught her on video that. watching, what, using, no, using, using that car. No, exactly. Wasn't first of all, first Ms. of all. Ms. Rich, okay. respond to that allegation. Okay, first of all, that's not why I got fired, actually, because when, when he opened up the investigation, they started investigating it. But my credit came into issue because with Gaming Commission, I can't have bad credit. And mm -hmm. I, like I said, when I got my job back in 2008, I had impeccable credit. He had a bankruptcy, nothing was in his name, but it was all in my name, and, but my credit was perfect. When they went to investigate this and they saw my credit is now 500 something, that's why I got fired. Because they can give, for using, using a player's card, they go through a process of a warning and you get, you get up to three warnings and mm -hmm. then you're fired. But that's not what happened here. Right. You when got they, fired for something else, but no, did they get worried about the player's card? I, she I understand. That's what yeah. I, yes. She got fired for but the player's card. But he doesn't understand. He credit. doesn't. But, I, I but, have text messages where she admitted to getting fired over. No. She's only saying that now because she's trying to save face for her parents and people that she's lied for to. For my parents. Whoever you've told that Mike, tell me about the day, the day that you were in labor. 
with my second child, I was in labor all day. Call him at work. He he comes home from work. He's um, at the door. I gotta go. My wife thinks she's in labor. No, he still didn't believe me. I drove myself to the hospital that night. It was 11 o'clock at night. Drove myself to the hospital. He makes me because we have a daughter at home. He makes me call everyone in my phone book. I'm in labor to get to get a babysitter. What is your version of that event? To that, honestly, I think it's so irrelevant to divorce uh, to our divorce. That is was, it true? That was literally six years ago. It had um, this has nothing to do with that. We're let, here today because. Let me ask you this, Mr. Rich. You say the, the labor thing was a long time ago, and it was a long time ago. Let me. But let me just pass this by you. Okay. I have to make a determination up here about who's telling the truth and who's, who's at fault for what. Doesn't an indication that you wouldn't take your wife to the hospital when she was in labor and the story they tell me just indicate a little bit of, little bit of jerkdom on your side of the... I, I... I disagree. When Divorce Court continues, has Kirsten stolen from Brandon again? She had opened up a charge account and she bought boots for herself, right, makeup, right. some uh, color contacts, $700 worth of stuff. Divorce Court returns with the case of Brandon Rich, who says he's run out of do-overs for this marriage, but his wife, Kirsten, wants to save their union. Okay, Mr. Mr. Rich, tell me about the $990 that you want from Mrs. Rich. That was just in, in this whole process. She had opened up a charge account and uh, during Christmas time she the charges are uh, like she bought boots for herself right, makeup right. some uh, color contacts seven hundred dollars worth of stuff and then there's like two hundred eighty dollars right. worth of fees right. she opened it in my name online admitted to it used all my personal information and that was just one of three credit cards the other two I've already paid for so I'm not even so concerned you, this with is the that. only one that's left yeah this Can is the only up? one that I'm still paying charge for. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a full opportunity to respond okay, okay? did you open up an account in his name, with his information, without his permission, and without his knowledge. Yes. Okay. Because right. that's that's I was that's what I was doing at that then. time. Yep. M M Mr. and Mrs. Rich, let me say this to you. Um, Mrs. Rich, you caused a lot of the chaos which you're currently suffering from. Despite the fact that it was the medication, you have to honor the fact that you did cause chaos in the household, economic ca chaos, emotional chaos, and the kitty chaos. And I believe Mr. Rich when he's telling me that you're pulling them kids in there. I think you're all emotionally strung out and you are letting them know about him leaving. You're upset about it and you're mad about it and you're throwing darts at your kids because of it. Please stop it. When you, when, you, when you involve them in any way, shape, or form, daddy gave me a divorce letter, that's throwing darts at him. You might as well just pin them up all on board and just throw it at him because that's what you're doing and you need to stop that. You need to stop it. <laughs> Mr. Rich, anger problem. You can't say you anger, have an anger problem. You get off the hook. There, there's solutions to that. There, there, there are ways to manage your anger and your failure to do that is your bad and that you should, and you should do something about it. You really, really should. Yeah. And, and that's one of the decisions that, that's the decision that you make for your children, is to control your anger so you don't pull out, pull the stability rug out from under them if you get angry at her. I'm, you with me on yeah, that absolutely. one? Now, you are fully and completely entitled to that $990. I'm asking you not to take it. That's fine. You gonna dismiss your action? Sure. That's his olive branch to you. He's, he, he's entitled to that 990. Legally, that money is his. But he, he stood here and he said, I'm not gonna take it. Now that's his olive branch to you. He doesn't want you, you leave it alone. And, and, and appreciate the fact that he let you off the hook for something you clearly owe, okay? As a result of your dismissal, for which I thank you, Mr. Rich, there will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Brandon reports that Kirsten is pregnant, but says he still plans to move forward with the divorce. Brandon asserts that Kirsten swore she was using birth control, and he feels she tricked him into the pregnancy. Kirsten insists her birth control failed and has offered to show Brandon her medical records if he has any doubts. She also reveals that though separated, they never had stopped having sex and that living down the street from each other has offered a lot of opportunity for it.